Veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war, Yevgeny Diki, said that in a year of offensives in Donbass, Russia advanced 38 kilometers and lost a number of troops that corresponds to the armies of several European countries. The Russian offensive in Donbass has been going on for a little over a year. The offensive that is still going on began on October the 10th last year. It will soon be a year and two weeks. In this year and less than two weeks, the Russians have advanced a whopping 38 kilometers. And in these 38 kilometers, they have lost approximately the number of several European armies combined, Dickey said on Radio NV. The Ukrainian veteran noted that the estimate of Russian medical losses at 100,000 is not overstated and given the survival rate of the Russian wounded, the number of killed occupiers can be estimated at 200,000. Then you can look for something in history to compare these figures with. The 10 years of the USSR's war in Afghanistan cost 15,000 killed. The last time losses of this scale were in World War II. So in two years, more than 10 year Afghanistans, the intensity of losses is thus 100 times greater than it was in Afghanistan. The last time losses of this scale were observed in Europe was in World War II. If not in Europe, then in the world, perhaps in the Korean War, and perhaps in some of the African wars. But this is a separate story because there was little use of equipment and millions of people were simply driven wall to wall. And in European history for 80 years, there has been nothing like this. Dickey emphasized, according to the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, as of the morning of October the 22nd, Russia has lost 681,580 soldiers. In July, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Alexander Sirsky, stated that Russia's losses on the front were three times higher than Ukraine's and in some areas even more. On September the 24th, the Russian publication Media Zona reported that the names of at least 71,000 Russian soldiers killed in Ukraine had been established. On October the 7th, the UK Ministry of Defense Intelligence Service reported a new record for average daily losses of Russian occupation forces in Ukraine. In September, the figure was 1,271 people. On October the 14th, the Wall Street Journal reported that according to American analysts in September 2024, Russian troops experienced the deadliest month of the war against Ukraine. According to Western intelligence estimates, Russia's losses amounted to 1,200 killed and wounded per day. A Russian attack on the northeastern Ukrainian city of Sumy overnight killed at least three people, including a 14-year-old girl, and injured one, the regional prosecutor's office said on Tuesday. The strike targeted residential and critical infrastructure, according to local authorities. Video released by Sumy's state emergency service showed rescue workers dousing flames and clearing debris in darkness at the scene. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky reacted to the attack on his Telegram page, saying what needed to be done to protect Ukraine from such Russian terror. It can be overcome only thanks to unity with the world, anti-aircraft defenses and electronic warfare systems, long-range strikes on Russian military logistics, military airfields and bases where Russian troops are located. All this can protect against Russian terror, Zelensky wrote on Tuesday afternoon. Ukraine's Air Force says Russia launched 60 Shahid drones at Ukraine on Monday night into Tuesday. Among them 42 were intercepted, 10 jammed, and 4 drones flew to Belarus or within Russia itself. Israeli military spokesperson Daniel Hagari said on Tuesday that the Israeli Air Force carried out a series of precise strikes on Hezbollah financial stronghold in Lebanon. 
One of our main targets last night was an underground vault with millions of dollars in cash and gold. The money was being used to finance Hezbollah's attacks on Israel. This vault was deliberately located under a residential building. Our strikes will degrade Hezbollah's ability to finance its attacks on Israelis, Hagari said. He also declassified the intelligence on a bunker under a hospital in Beirut. He said the bunker has not been struck. The military official accused Iran of sending cash and gold by planes to the Iranian embassy in Beirut before it then goes directly to Hezbollah. Israel carried out strikes on Beirut overnight into Tuesday hours after announcing its plans to carry out more strikes in Lebanon against a Hezbollah-run financial institution. At least 15 branches of al qaeda al-Hassan, which Israel says uses customers' deposits to finance attacks against Israel, were hit late Sunday in the southern neighborhoods of Beirut across southern Lebanon and in eastern Beka Valley, where Hezbollah has a strong presence. One strike flattened a nine-story building in Beirut with a branch inside it. The Israeli military issued evacuation warnings against the strikes, and there were no reports of casualties. The Associated Press journalists witnessed strikes late on Monday in the coastal region of Uzai near Beirut's airport, and Lebanon's health ministry said an airstrike near Beirut's largest public hospital killed four, including a child, and wounded 24. It was the first strike on the Lebanese capital in 10 days. Israeli ground forces invaded Lebanon earlier this month. The military said it aims to push Hezbollah out of southern Lebanon so that tens of thousands of Israelis can return to their homes nearby after more than a year of cross-border rocket and drone attacks. Israeli airstrikes have pounded large areas of Lebanon for weeks, forcing over a million people to flee their homes. Hezbollah has been launching rockets into Israel nearly every day since Hamas's deadly raid into Israel last year that sparked the war in Gaza.